doing a bit of painting today. What's this got to do? What's this got to do with Land Rovers? Well, it's got everything to do with Land Rovers because remember when I did a, a 2.5 petrol engine into a series truck? Well, we didn't have a bulkhead. The thing was, it was kind of difficult to work out where everything would go. So, Jean-Francois was having a bit of a trouble doing his bulkhead. Now, what's this got to do with it? Well, it's actually, I dug out my old bulkhead alignment frame. So, I uh, gave it a bit of a sandblast and a bit of a clean up yesterday. So, I'm giving it a lick of paint. Let me finish this off and let's go and have a look at the bulkhead and you'll see why I made this. Right. So why the frame? Well, when I first started doing Land Rovers here in Canada, I don't know, 25 years ago, if not more, um, we couldn't buy bulkheads. We couldn't buy anything. Well, you could buy footwells, but they, they only fit where they touched. Um, so it was a big problem. So one day I happened to come across a brand new Series 2A bulkhead. So instantly, I made a frame to go around it, so all the pickup points were on it. We'll have a look at it in a minute. That meant even the worst of Land Rover bulkheads could be salvaged again. So it wasn't too bad. Um, but the problem was, I used to have a little service of welding up bulkheads for people. And because the distances are so far, I used to do an exchange service. Well, the problem was, nobody was sending the old ones back because it was too expensive. So therefore, I was stuck. So that had to stop because I had nothing to weld. Was I going to import bulkheads just to weld them up? You must be joking. So sadly that came to a stop. So I put the uh, frame on top of the container and it had been rusting away there for donkey's years. It, it stood about for years and years and years. So I just give it a quick clean up and a bit of paint and just to make it look presentable for when we actually do this job. So let's have a look at this job and it'll just show you how bad some bulkheads do get and how people have problems with alignment. Let's look at this one down here. Well, you can see it's looking pretty sad. Um, this bit's all... John Francois started to do it and he got one footwell in, uh, one door pillar in, but I'm not sure what the alignment's like and he wasn't sure either. And of course you can see down at the bottom, he's left that original. Uh, it must have been sandblasted by somebody, it wasn't me. So we're going to have to get this aligned properly because if this bulkhead's too wide this way or the, the height of the doors, uh, the door pillars are wrong, you ain't going to get your doors to shut properly. Now, interestingly enough, if you look down here, we can turn this camera around a bit, there we go. The footwells he's got, I think these must be Rover's North ones. Doesn't have a sticker on. But you can see it's got the um, the stamping to reinforce the floor, which is nice. Yeah, I sort of look forward to doing them. And it's also, yeah, it must have got these from Rover's North. Oh yeah, there's a Rover's North sticker. Is that stainless? Made in UK. I bet that's stainless. That's going to be interesting to weld. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. But he's got that piece to go down here. And the end plates too. Oh, and there's also a, a brick part door pillar. Now to write home about. But I think on this side, looking at the door pillar, I don't think I'm going to cut it all off. Why? Well, it, there's usually on the door pillar it picks up off the top bolts over there and I don't want to move those, I just want to measure them up so we get the holes right. It's kind of difficult to explain. Let me open one of these up and I'll show you. For some reason I've never been able to fathom out, I never understood why they couldn't actually weld these two pieces together. 
they are handed because if you look there's a little cut out here for the bolts you see have a good look around it the bottom foot is the same but this bit is different but it's supposed to slip in there like that well obviously the bolt holes should be the same or are they um i don't know i don't know who made these they're not too bad they're not too bad quality but on the top of that bulkhead this is a very old series two bulkhead i think and where we usually put like captive nuts in here they're actually welded in captive nuts at the top so don't really want to move those if possible because then we've got to take the inner piece out to put the slip-in captive nuts that drop down inside your footwear in your, inside your door pillar and then you have to fanny about for half an hour trying to get the bloody nut back out we've been there done that haven't we so that's what we're up against but with the jigometer with the brick rest jigometer we can fix this now before we do I'm going to take the camera off and we're going to have a look at a couple of points where it picks up. So we pick up off the top bracket here. We pick up off the hole that goes through the footwell, uh, footwell, through the foot of the door pillar, and also through. Uh, where are they now? Are they there? Are they? There's, I think they're there. Two bolts in there. Well, missing on that side. Ah, there they are. Look, you see those two bolts there? They're coming handy. But also, most importantly, if you haven't got anything under here to, to work on, we have a little hole in here, and I made a, a next, an, a, an additional bracket that goes through here. Uh, it, there's a pin that goes through there, and it locates it in so it's nice and square. Sorry for mumbling, I'm just making this up as I go along. But anyway, let's go and have a look. So, back onto the frame again. You can see these two little pins here line up in those holes we just looked at and they bolt well I'll, I'll show you this side because I've got paint over everything they bolt through here and here at the top that keeps that in line so there's our hole for our footwell footwell our foot of our door pillar I call it a footwell there we've got the bracket at the top and down here we've got a little plate which is a bit rusty now with two tapped holes in to put the uh, the footwell in so it should be quite easy because then everything's all, sort of jives and all in line yeah I, like I say I've never used this for donkey's years I think it was 15 years ago since I last used this it made me a lot of money I must admit you know it put me on my feet but uh, it was just by chance I had a brand new bulkhead to work off because trying to work it out without one is a bit of a nightmare I wouldn't actually mind doing one for a a defender. In fact, I bet you, I bet you, with a few nuts and bolts and a few, uh, you know, cunning plans, I bet we could make one, make this one into a defender one too. Wouldn't take much doing. However, I ain't got a bulkhead for a, for a defender, unfortunately. I've got nothing to work on. But anyway, it looks like a lot of fun, doesn't it? So this is just a tease, and then sometime this week when the paint's dry, we'll get round to uh, welding it up. I asked John Francois to see if he'd come down and uh, give us a hand, but he said he'd have to plan a day off, and I'm sort of wanting to get the Range Rover back in here, so I might just steam on with this and do it myself. Um, by using the welder and some, like, some spot welds and holes and things like this, it shouldn't take too long. And because this little frame swivels 360 degrees, you don't have to move from here, you don't have to get under a car and mess about. But the good thing is it keeps the width correct for the, to go onto your outriggers, so you know that's right. And it keeps the height correct, so, and so you don't get this happening when you put your door pillars in. So they're in line, because if your door pillars aren't lined up properly, you'll get a hell of a job trying to get the doors to shut. And the wings at the front, if it's too far if it's tipped too far forward you, you can crease the wing it'll actually pop out so just watch for that all right there's something to look forward to see you later